Hello everyone, what is up, it is me, AlbiMTG. For today's video, I recently had a question asked to me on one of my old Card Sphere videos, where I believe the person's name was Tai, T-A-I. Um, the comment will be showing up on the screen right now so you guys can read along with it, but essentially what the question asked was, how do I manage to send off cards on Card Sphere, but yet still keep up a reasonable inventory uh, to be able to send off more cards? And one of the things that I do is, of course, drafting, and then I'll, you know, draft a standard set, draft a master set, whatever it is, and then whatever cards I don't need, I just send off right away. Uh, but another thing that I do, which I kind of wanted to showcase here, was that I'll pick up some very just cheap buys, and then just end up flipping those on Card Sphere. That's something that I really enjoy doing. And so I wanted to walk you guys through a little bit of a uh, pickup that I did here on, I believe this was Friday, um, where one of my friends is going to the... Uh, the SCG tournament this weekend and was just going to sell off all the bulk that he had to the SCG vendors and then a bunch of random things uh, to the SCG buy list as well. And he told me because he knows that I like to look through, you know, commons, uncommons, bulk, that kind of stuff, um, that I would have first dibs if I wanted to pick up some of this stuff. So I'm going to walk you through what I picked up, $65 worth of some bulk stuff and then some stuff from the buy list. We're going to start off with the stuff from the buy list here, and if I can remember the prices I paid for them, we'll, we'll talk about it and we'll talk about why I picked them up. Uh, so things like Rich Cards Expertise for, I believe, $0.25, $0.50, cents, something like that. Uh, we picked up a Restoration Angel, Master of the Wild Hunt, uh, three thematic compass, which again, I like picking up these uh, Ixlon cards. Let me go ahead and get this to, there we go, focused. Uh, the thematic compass, I like picking up these Ixlon flip cards. I think that they're a pretty good little investment. I think that they'll all go up over time. Um, the buy a box promo versions are much better investments, but even these non promo ones are, you know, still fine little pickups, especially if you can get them for cheap. Uh, two copies of Gilded Lotus. These, again, pick them up cheap and they're easy to send off, you know, very easily. Pretty high demand card. Uh, full playset of Hollow Ones. I believe I got these at like 50 cents a piece, something like that. So full playset of Hollow One. Good little modern staple there. Uh, grinding Station. Also, uh, because he was going to the SCG event, all of the buy list prices were the SCG buy list prices. So if you guys are curious on exactly what I paid for these, you guys can check the SCG buy list prices and see pretty similarly um, to what I'm showing you here. I don't know how much prices would have changed between Friday and now. Um, but even like Grinding Station, SCG doesn't pay a lot for commons and uncommons, even the valuable ones. So I think this Grinding Station was only like 50 cents or a dollar, something like that. Uh, Oblivion Stone, again, little pickup here from Iconic Masters. And then I picked up, of course, some of these Eldrazi. They're always good little pickups. Uh, Reality Smashers, I think at like a dollar a piece, maybe, for Reality Smashers. And then I think 50 cents a piece for the Matter Reshapers. Again, decent little pickups. Again, like I mentioned before, SCG, SCG doesn't pay a ton for good commons and uncommons. So full play set of Burning Inquiry, again, to go along with the hollow ones. And these Burning Inquiries only cost me $0.25 cents a piece. They're like a $2, $3 common. So gladly able to pick those up for cheap. Uh, we have the Scorpion God here from... Um, uh, from Hour of Devastation, this one being a foil one. Uh, this one only cost me a dollar. I think a foil god card for only a dollar seems like a pretty easy pickup. I'm sure somebody somewhere along the line will want that. Uh, the Urborg Tomb of Yagmoth. I actually picked this one up for myself, I'm not going to lie. This one was from his uh, GP when he played in a GP. It has the uh, the stamp. You guys can probably see here. Let me zoom in, or let me focus on it. Yeah, so it has the stamp here at the bottom to show that it was from a sealed Grand Prix that he played in for M15. And uh, I just kind of wanted it for my 8-rack deck. I recently picked up two more Urborgs for, so that I would have the entire, you know, um, deck for 8-rack. Uh, for I was missing a couple of cards from it, like one, one or two Urborgs and Ensnaring Bridges and things like that. So now I have the entire deck, I think, aside from Ensnaring Bridges and... Uh, I think two Liliana the Veils too, but anyway, uh, I, I just wanted this one instead of the one that I already had because it has the GP promo stamp on it. And again, even though I didn't play in the GP for the promo stamp, uh, I, I still think it's cool. I like the GP stamped promo cards almost more than I like the autographed cards. Uh, Core Spirit Dancer from Battle Bond, still again, very cheap little pickup. Smothering Tithe, picked up two of them. I want to say these were $4 a piece, and Smothering Tithe is like a $9 card, so that's less than 50% of what they're worth that I was able to pick them up for. 
Uh, two Deep Root Elites here. Again, just decent little cards th that were cheap. I think they were like 50 cents maybe. And uh, some Merfolk player out there will definitely want those. Picked up a Command Tower here. This one was near mint. He had another one that wasn't near mint, but I chose to just pick up the near mint one. Uh, Storm the Vault here. Again, like I said about these Ixalan flip cards, I think they're all pretty reasonable ones. This is the one that flips into Talarian Academy. You can see here. Uh, taps for a blue for each uh, artifact you control. So again, I think that was like 50 cents, not bad on that one. Creeping Tar Pit for, I believe, $2 or $2.50, something like that. So for a modern staple, $2, $2.50 seemed like a no-brainer to me. And then finally, Phyrexian Altar, which I can sell for about $12.75 to $14, something like that. And it cost me $8, so it'll just be a decent little, uh, you know, send away. I have no use for this Phyrexian Altar, so someone else can have it, and I'll gladly take the, you know, $5 profit or whatever I end up making in profit off of it. And so those were all of the cards that were buy listed. So everything else that you're about to see now would have been stuff that SCG would have considered as bulk. So these are going to be all the rares that I am going to show you in this pile are 13 cents a piece was what I paid for them. And all of the mythics you're going to see in this pile were 25 cents a piece. So again, very cheap prices for some, <laughs> for some great cards here. Uh, so inspiring statuary at, again, 13 cents a piece. Um, some of these mythics here, we picked up three Dovin Bonds, Planeswalkers for 25 cents. Actually, there's a fourth Dovin here. Uh, again, Planeswalkers for 25 cents just seems kind of like a no-brainer. <laughs> so, gladly picked up some Dovins. Uh, we've got the Oketras, the True here, some more of these Amonkhet gods. Uh, you saw the Foil Scorpion God before. There is more Scorpion scorpion Gods to come here in the near future, you'll see. Uh, so two Oketras, again, at $0.25 cents a piece. Uh, two Rashmi Eternities Crafter. I wish these were foil. I think the foil ones sell very well. Um, but even at non-foil, someone will probably want them for more than just $0.25. Cents. Green Ward to Marasa at $0.25 cents a piece. Fine pickup for me. Uh, two time stream navigators. I'm honestly not sure why I picked this one up. I don't even remember picking this one up, but I'll take it. <laughs> so, uh, 25 cents for a mythic again, just could be a fine price. I'm sure someone would be willing to give me like 50 cents for it or something like that. So it's a small profit, but I don't know, maybe something happens eventually that breaks time stream navigator, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, so those were two of those. We'll get some more of these Amonkhet gods here. Uh, we have three Bantu the Glorified here. This is the Black Amonkhet God. Again, another three of those, 75 cents for the three uh, Bantus. Got a Demon Lord Belzen Lock here for, again, 25 cents a piece. Not bad. Uh, some more of these God cards. Kefnet the Mindful. There's another three of those. Kefnet the Mindful for a total of 75 cents, again, for the three copies of Kefnet. I think Kefnet's probably the worst God from Amonkhet block, but... Maybe someone will want them for some sort of a mono blue commander deck. Um, I think the new Kefnet is probably better um, for commander, but I'm not. I don't play too much commander, so I don't honestly know. Um, but yeah, someone will probably give me more than 25 cents a piece for some Kefnets. After that, we have three copies of the Scorpion God to go along with that foil copy that I picked up for a dollar. So these ones were 25 cents a piece then for the non foil ones. So again, good little pickups on the Scorpion God. Got a couple here of Yehenny's Expertise. I kind of like these Expertise cards, especially Yehenny's, because it does see a little bit of modern play occasionally in sideboards. All creatures get minus three, minus three, and then you get to cast something with CMC three or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So I do like picking up these Yehenny's Expertise. Again, at 13 cents, I think that that's a very solid pickup. Uh, we have another copy of Inspiring Statuary. A uh, copy of Spell Swindle, again, um, we've got Pia and Kieran Nalar. This is a card that sees occasional modern play. I think it's only a matter of time before this card goes back up to, like, maybe, I want to say 75 cents to a dollar, because it just is a really good card, but the supply is out there. It was reprinted in Dual Decks, Inventors versus something, Goblin? No, not Goblins versus Inventors. I don't know, whatever it was, it was reprinted in that dual deck, and uh, the intro decks from Magic Origins, PNK and Nalar, were the red intro deck cards, so I'm not sure that it'll ever be too expensive, but maybe 75 cents to a dollar at some point for a Pia and Kieran Nalar. Uh, Zur the Enchanter, again, from, um, or actually not again, that was the first uh, Zur the Enchanter, 
But again, 13 cents a piece for, again, a decent little commander card. Not too bad. Uh, Runic Armasaur here. Again, kind of an okay card. Didn't see... It saw like a little bit of play right when it first became standard legal, but nothing too crazy now. Can probably get, again, maybe 50, 75 cents a piece for it. Something like that. Uh, Chief Engineer. Artifact spells you have have Convoke. So, cool little card. Maybe some commander potential in that one. Uh, Altered Ego, I think, has the potential to go up in the future as a commander card. It was from Shadows Over Innistrad, which was a pretty reasonably open set, but this card is just really good. Four mana for whatever the best creature on the battlefield is, and you can even pay more mana to make it even larger than that greater creature on the battlefield, and it can't be countered, so I think Altered Ego definitely has the potential to go up as a uh, commander card in the future for these green-blue decks, so I like picking these up really cheap. Again, 13 cents a piece. I like picking that up and possibly holding on to it for a little while. Uh, Ripjaw Raptor here from Standard. I believe there's some more of those in here. Yeah, there's a full playset of the Ripjaw Raptors. Again, at 13 cents a piece for a dollar, dollar twenty-five card. Very happy to pick up some Ripjaw Raptors. Uh, Hanwar Battlements from Eldritch Moon. This is one of the meld flip cards. This is the top half. Uh, the bottom half he did have, but it wasn't in great condition, so I just picked up the bottom half, the, the Battlements. We have a Swiftblade Vindicator here from uh, Guilds of Ravnica. Doesn't see a ton of standard play anymore, but saw a little bit right when Boros, you know, first when Boros decks first started getting tested. Spine of Ishsha here from uh, one of the Commander sets. I believe this was Commander Anthology, or not? A, did they call? Yeah, they're called anthologies for Commanders. Um, but again, decent little card. Bunch of uh, artifact-based Commander decks will want to pick up a Spine of Ishsha. Uh, we've got two copies here of Dowsing Dagger, which I think is one of the better cards for um, the Flip Ixalan cards. Again, very cheap to pick up, and uh, this one I really like for commander purposes because the front half works on commander. Target opponent creates two O2 uh, uh, creature tokens with defender, so if you have a friend at the table, you can say, hey, you know, you, you can have these defender tokens, just don't attack me for a while, and then when you do get to uh, transform the Dowsing Dagger, you get to have essentially a Black Lotus on a land where you add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. So these are the kind of cards that I think commander players will really like. They have kind of the political aspect to it that commander players enjoy. And then they're also just pretty decent because you have a land that could as early as maybe turn three be flipping into a land that can also tap for three mana. So uh, Dowsing Dagger, decent little pickup there for the Ixalan uh, flip cards. Got a copy of Hell's Caretaker from Masters 25. Um, this one, again, just kind of bulk, but I do like the effect on Hell's Caretaker. Um, obviously, I wish it was from the Legends version, as you guys can see here. Those ones are significantly more expensive, but never, you know, never a bad thing to just pick up a small little commander card like this one for cheap. So, Hell's Caretaker, then we're looking at five copies of Endless One. Again, one of the uh, Eldrazi cards. They're decent little pickups, even though the set was heavily open because people were looking for the Expedition lands. Um, I still like picking up these playable ones, like the Eldrazi, uh, or the Endless Ones, sorry. Um, then we have some, uh, some Merfolk here. So we have one Seafloor Oracle, which again, I think is a great Merfolk for Commander. Uh, whenever a Merfolk you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, so that's great in those Kumena Merfolk tribal decks. And then we have Herald of the Secret Streams as well. Full play set of those, and those work well in those plus one, plus one counters builds that people like in Commander. Things like Atraxa, Voral of the Whole Clade, uh, uh, what's his name? Peer, Peer and Toothy from Battle Bond. These are uh, great inclusions into those uh, into those decks. And then I have one copy of Paradoxical Outcome here, but I can assure you there are plenty more Paradoxical Outcomes to come as we uh, look through the remainder of these cards that we uh, picked up here. Got three copies of Strom's Expertise. Again, this one I'm. I don't think it's as good as Yehenny's Expertise. Hasn't really seen any modern play outside of something like Tokens, for example, Black White Tokens. Um, but again, just a fine little pickup, even though, again, Kaladesh and Aether Revolt, fairly heavily opened sets because people were looking for those inventions. Uh, after that, we have a Summary Dismissal. This is fringe modern play, so I'm fine picking it up for 13 cents. Someone will give me 25 cents or more for it. Uh, Naban, Dean of Iteration. Again, fun little commander card. 
Uh, Life Crafter, oops, sorry about that. Life Crafter's Bestiary. Well, again, good commander card. These commander cards that I'm picking up for very cheap, those are like exactly how I how I love my pickups because I don't really play commander, so I'm perfectly fine trading them away. I don't really have to think about whether or not I want to hold on to them for too long. I'm fine just kind of trading them off because I don't have any, you know, connection to them or want to put them in any of the decks I'm building for something like modern, for example. So I love picking up these commander cards. Uh for Madcap Experiments, it's I don't know. This card sees a little bit of modern play in the Platinum Imperion, uh, Platinum Angel decks. It's not great, but maybe something will come along someday that will make Madcap Experiment a little bit better than just the Imperion or the Angel. Uh, after that, we have two Dark Salvations. Great for your uh, zombie decks. Two of those there. Another one of the Eldrazi. This one from Eldritch Moon, the Distended Mindbender with the Emerge mechanic. Uh, another copy of Xur the Enchanter, which we looked at a little bit earlier. Have a copy of the Antiquities War here from Dominaria. Another copy of Altered Ego. Again, I already expressed my opinions on Altered Ego. I think these are great pickups for cheap. Uh, commit to Memory. Again, sees fringe modern play in the uh, mono blue pitch decks. Uh, the decks where you're playing Narset, Parter of Veils, along with cards like Days Undoing that make each player draw seven, and then with the Narset in play, they end up only drawing one while you draw seven. So again, fine little card there. Um, sees sometimes play in blue white control, but it's very unlikely. Uh, actually, I have a bunch more of those here, so let me just get those out of the way. We have another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven copies of commit to memory there we go sorry about that and then with uh, this one being the eighth copy that's two play sets then of commit to memory after that play set of another commander card Hapatra vizier of poisons two two for two that makes some snakes and uh, deals with minus one minus one counters um, after that we have three copies of regal caracal everyone loves their cat decks you can't say no to regal caracal so again pick those up for 13 cents a piece the regal caracals uh, we have one Gonti Lord of Luxury. Again, I think Gonti's a great pickup for cheap as well. Gonti has a very sweet effect on it for Commander. Um, after that, two copies of Pull from Tomorrow here. Draw X cards. Discard a card for X blue blue. Good little draw spell, again, for Commander. Sometimes modern as, like, maybe a one of, um, but kind of unlikely much more of a Commander card. Uh, three copies of Cascading Cataracts, which again is a good commander land, um, indestructible, and then able to work in your Jota decks or maybe with your new Morpheon decks from uh, Modern Horizons, the kind of decks that can add five colors, very good in uh, those sort of things. So these are fairly sought after lands, the Cascading Cataracts. Um, then we have a playset of Drakehaven. Uh, let me get the... Yeah, you guys can see all four. There we go. The Drake Havens. So whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, you create a 2-2 two -two, uh, Flying Drake. Cycling's coming back in Modern Horizons. Maybe this will go up to, like, 50 cents or something like that. Kind of doubt it, but, again, they were cheap enough that I'm willing to pick them up. Scavenger Grounds. Card was, like, a dollar for a while, even though it was out of standard. So maybe I can find someone who will pick it up for about a dollar. Uh, another copy of Paradoxical Outcome to Liliana's Mastery, again, for your zombie decks. Uh, we've got one uh, Hapatra, Vizier of Poisons, again. I believe there was a second one in there earlier. Uh, we have another playset of a good little modern card that's showing up quite a bit, and that is the Flame Wake Phoenix, showing up in those Graveyard Mardu, Hollow, er, Mardu and Black Red Hollow One strategies, where uh, once you get the hollow one out, you can return these very easily from your graveyard, and you don't mind discarding them. So I essentially picked up a bunch of hollow one cards here that I could probably trade off to all the same person. Four hollow ones, four phoenix, and four burning inquiries. So maybe I can find a buyer who's looking to put together hollow one that I can trade off those 12 cards right away to them. Um, then we have more copies of Paradoxical Outcome. There's four, and there is another two to make it six more copies of Paradoxical Outcome. So there was at least a total of two play sets of Paradoxical Outcome within this uh, little purchase. Uh, we have a Remorseful Cleric here from M19. Again, great pickup for only 13 cents. This is a fantastic card and sees some play even in uh, Eternal formats, Modern, and uh, Legacy Death and Taxes as well because it deals with the graveyard. Good little answer to those. 
Uh, we have one irrigated farmland. Again, you can never really go wrong with these dual lands that aren't too bad. This one's like fine. So again, for blue-white commander players, decent little land to uh, stick in their blue-white decks. Uh, we have three copies of Arcane Adaptation. Again, maybe there's some kind of uh, deck that comes along in the future that ends up breaking Arcane Adaptation. Um, I know there's a couple of combos with it, like with the M19 Liliana and stuff, but I'm not you know, overly sold on those. Uh, we have another copy of the Herald of Secret Streams to deal with the plus one plus one counters. A uh, copy of Thalia's Lancers, which one of my favorite cards ever printed. One of the uh, one of my favorite cards that I ever got a chance to play with as well. Um, I played with this in a black white legendary standard deck where it was finding uh, cards like Gaia Reach Sanitarium, which is a legendary land, uh, Bruna and Gisela, the meld cards from Eldritch Moon. And just a bunch of other great legendary creatures. Oath of the Gatewatch, Kalidus, I believe, was another option that I could hit. And this was before Planeswalkers were considered legendary, so I was also running like Luliana, The Last Hope, and Soren Grim Nemesis in that deck as well. Obnixilus Reignited. So if I would have been able to fetch those with these Thalia's Lancers, that would have been fantastic. So again, Thalia's Lancers kind of high in supply because the promo versions are available in like the Walmart three-pack things that come with a, a promo rare along with them. Thalia's Lancers is one of them. Um, but I think maybe Thalia's Lancers could still be a decent little card because it does tutor a Planeswalker or tutor a legendary, you know, creature that you need for your commander deck. can even tutor, uh, tutor like, legendary enchantments or lands, something like that. So I do like the Thalia's Lancers. Uh, Eldrazi Obligator sees play in red-green Eldrazi decks in modern. Uh, Revel Arc, good little commander card as well from Ultimate Masters here. Very cheap right now. Um, we have two copies of Harbinger of the... Oops, sorry, that's another Herald of the Secret Streams. Uh, so again, for the plus one, plus one counters deck. And then we have one Harbinger of the Tides here from uh, Magic Origins. Again, for the modern Merfolk players. Uh, we have some more of these flip cards here from Ixalan Block. This one is Vance's Blasting Cannon, so it's the red one, and then transforms into one of these lands. Again, I talked about it, I love these Ixalan flip cards, and these ones here, full play set of Conqueror's Galleon. Um, this one's very easy to flip, crew 4 for a 210. The 210 is most likely going to live through combat, so then you can flip it over, and then you get this which has a bunch of potential options that you can do. Uh, adding mana, drawing cards, returning a target card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's just a great card to have in Commander, very versatile. So picking up a full play set of those I think is very nice as well. <coughs> After that, uh, we have two Land of War Waste here from Magic Origins. Just, again, another fine land for 13 cents. I can find someone who wants them for 50 cents. Actually, there's a third one here, third Land of War Waste. Uh, after that, we have a Notion Thief from Masters 25. Two copies of Bomat Courier, which again at 13 cents I think is a fantastic pickup. Um, after that, we have Chief Engineer, another one of those, as well as another copy of Hypatra. Again, these cards aren't sorted too well. They were just kind of like, as I was pulling through them, you know, from his giant box of bulk stuff, I just kind of pulled them out one at a time. So they're not overly sorted to, uh, together. Uh, we've got Jugan the Rising Star here from Iconic Masters, one of the Kamigawa Dragons. Um, we have Abyssal Persecutor from Iconic Masters as well. A 6-6 six, six for 4 mana, but does have a bit of a downside on it. Um, then we have Abruna the Fading Light. Again, one of these flip cards from Eldritch Moon flips with Gisela. And I think I have several Gisela's as well that I can potentially uh, include in like a little package deal, like Abruna and a Gisela. Um, after that, we have three more of these Eldrazi's. We've got the Endbringers here, which again see modern play in Eldrazi Tron, so good pickups there. Um, two Eldrazi Mimics, which again see play in like the Legacy Eldrazi builds, where you can really ramp these out very fast as early as turn one. You could potentially get a couple of these out because of uh, Eye of Ugin being legal in that format. Uh, we have Eternal Scourge here, again, another Eldrazi card, and then this one, a little bit of an uncommon here, Crystal Chimes, three mana for an artifact, and then three and tap. Sacrifice Crystal Chimes, return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to your hand. This takes us on to the final pile. So again, you can see I picked up quite a few cards for the $65, and the majority of it was really just those uh, uh, cards from the buy list that we went over in the beginning of the video. Uh, we have a Blight Herder here, another BFC Eldrazi, 
Uh, another copy of Thalia's Lancers. Card is great. Vryn Wingmare. See some play in Death and Taxes occasionally. Uh, Swarm Intelligence, which I believe there's a yeah, second copy of Swarm Intelligence here. This is a card that I always thought was a bulk rare, and then I saw one person play it in Commander, thought it was absolutely disgusting, and then realized there was a bit of a demand for this card, so now I'm more than happy to pick up Swarm Intelligences because I know that they're going to sell because they do some disgusting things in Commander. Um, two more copies here of Summary Dismissal, Exile All Their Spells, Counter All Abilities. Uh, probably not worth... Uh, well, it's already like not worth too much, like maybe 25 cents, 50 cents, or whatever, but with Flusterstorm coming into Modern, it'll be unlikely that we'll ever see uh, Summary Dismissal sleeved up in Modern again, but who knows, maybe. Uh, another Chief Engineer here that probably makes the playset of the Chief Engineers. Um, after that, we have what appears to be six more copies of Eldrazi Obligator. There's three... And there is another three, so six more copies of Eldrazi Obligator. Again, good for your modern Eldrazi builds, like the red-green Eldrazi. Uh, another copy here of Scavenger Grounds. Again, talked about it a little bit earlier. Was like a $2 card, dollar card, something like that, once it got out of standard. So again, maybe can sell it for like a dollar, something like that. Uh, two Kapala Warden of Waves here from Ixalan. Again, cheap little pickup for something that these Merfolk Commander players are definitely going to want for their decks. Um, after that, we have several Blight Herders. It looks like a full playset of Blight Herder along with an additional two. And then I believe we saw one or two earlier on, so probably close to two uh, playsets worth of Blight Herder as well. Uh, we have a Port Town here from... Um, Shadows of Innistrad, again, these non-basic lands that aren't too bad, I don't mind picking them up. Someone's going to want them for their commander decks, because you just want as many dual lands as you can. Uh, Knight of Souls Betrayal, this one, uh, the original from Kamigawa Block, did go down qu like a decent amount since the printing in uh, Rival, or not Rivals of Rixalon, in Icon, or er, yeah, in Iconic Masters, there we go. Sorry, I was looking at a Rivals uh, of Ixalan card in here, and my mind thought Rivals of Ixalan, but was reprinted in Iconic Masters, so isn't worth quite as much anymore, but being an original printing could still uh, do something. Uh, we have Trading Post here, again, for you Commander players. Great utility card. Mindlock Orb. Players can't search libraries. That's also a, uh, a Commander card if you decide not to have any friends. Um, after that, Nimble Obstructionist for 13 cents. Love this pickup. I have cast Nimble Obstructionist plenty of times in Modern, and so I am more than happy to pick that up for the cheap price of 13 cents. Uh, we have a Collective Defiance. Fine red card for Commander, but again, nothing too crazy. Uh, an additional copy of Thalia's Lancers. Counterflux here from uh, Return to Ravnica can't be countered by spells or abilities, and then you counter a spell, and then it also has overload on it as well. Uh, collective Effort here, another one of the collective cards from Eldritch Moon. I believe Collective Effort's the cheapest of all of them, though, unfortunately. Uh, another copy of Pull from Tomorrow, draw some cards, discard a card. Summary Dismissal, another copy here as well. Um, another Yehenny's Expertise, I believe this makes the fifth or sixth one that I picked up here. Uh, another copy of Bruna, again, good card that uh, people will want because the uh, Gisela, they'll flip it into the giant uh, Brisella, which is a 910 Flying First Strike Vigilance Lifelink, and your opponents can't cast spells with converted mana cost 3 or less, which is pretty crazy. Uh, we got some copies here of Inspiring Statuary, another uh, four copies there, another playset. Uh, spell Swindle, again, here from Ixalan Block. Uh, Strom's Expertise, I believe this one makes the playset of Strom's Expertise. Uh, and then we have a Strom himself, which goes in the Cheerios deck for Modern. Um, we have two more copies, actually several more copies. Lifecrafter's Bestiary, which again I think is a very fun card in Commander. There's a third copy here, which again I believe makes the playset, maybe even more than a playset, and I'm realizing the, uh, the shadow was starting to creep into camera there of the pile of cards that I have next to me. Uh, but yep, three more Life Crafters Bestiary. We're almost done. We've only got uh, this much left to go, so we're almost there. One more Inspiring Statuary. Uh, some Hope of Girippers. Here is a playset of Hope of Girripper, and then another two Hope of Girippers. So playset and a half of those. Uh, we have an additional Vryn Wingmare here. Again, another Death and Taxes card. 
we have some Campbell Council of Allocations. Uh, sometimes see some modern sideboard play, but again, very uh, good commander for uh, death and taxes builds in commander. So again, Campbell Council of Allocation there, full playset of him. Uh, after that, one more Regal Caracal, I believe, makes the playset of Regal Caracals as well. Uh, one more Paradoxical Outcome. One more Bomat Courier, I believe, makes the playset, or maybe only three Bomat Couriers. But again, at uh, 13 cents a piece, I'm willing to pick up as many Bomat Couriers as I can. Card that sees some legacy play occasionally, decent little pickup. Uh, an additional Gonti Lord of Luxury, absolutely great card. And then finally, last card here, we do have the Swarm Intelligence from Hour of Devastation. So now you guys can see, this is kind of how I get my, you know, cards to, <laughs> to be able to send off on Card Sphere. Um, buying all of these at very cheap prices. And then sending them off to people who are willing to pay more than what I paid for them. Uh, so if you guys are interested in any of those cards... Potentially put them on your uh, card sphere once list, and we'll we'll see if we can send them out to you. Um, we do have again like this entire chunk of cards I managed to pick up for again sixty five dollars in total. There were a lot of bulk rares in there, but um, the bulk rares were mainly picked up for thirteen cents a piece or twenty five cents a piece for the mythics. But when you talk about some of the things like a foil mythic for a dollar, Phyrexian altar for only eight dollars, um, creeping tar pit for like two bucks, something like that. Just some very, very good pickups overall, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it was a, a decent little buy, and I can't wait to send off some of these cards, and we'll see if we can possibly make more than $65 off of uh, everything that I purchased here. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys have any more questions uh, about Cardsphere, how I do things on Cardsphere, be sure to let me know down below in the comment section. Tell me in the comment section, would you have paid $65 for uh, all of these bulk rares and mythics along with some of those buy-listed cards from the beginning? Be sure to let me know, and I'll see you guys here next time for another Magic the Gathering video.